Hello, my name's Adam and I'm here to tell you all about how we teach early reading and phonics in reception. Usually this time around every year in the start of November, we start teaching phonics. We use the scheme called Letters and Sounds and we teach it in the whole class. The children learn to read new sounds each day, learn high frequency words. One of the first things children will learn to do, which is really important, is how to sound words out and that's called decoding. So when they get five, read words, they learn the individual sounds and we teach them to the sound buttons k, a, t. And that way they can decode the word. When they're writing, the opposite of that is segmenting. So they hear a word such as man and they stretch the word out and they can hear the individual sounds m, a, n. So they can then write the word using those sounds that they've learned. Children will come home and use lots of vocabulary that we teach them whilst we're, we're teaching them the sounds, um, such as a phoneme, which is the sound that the graphene makes. Digraphs, that's the word we use to describe sounds where there's two letters that make one sound, such as sh, and also a trigraph, where there's three letters that make one sound, such as i, which you find in the words like i. Children will talk about tricky words. That's something we learn a lot. Really what tricky words are, are the sight vocabulary words that they need to know. And the main problem with lots of these is that you cannot sound them out. So the children just need to be able to recognise them and be able to read them without, because they can't sound them out. In school, children read every morning when they come in. You may know they come in with their book bags, they change their books. The adults in the classroom go around and read with children every day. And we also give children extra support sessions should they need them. It's really important that you know uh, what book band your child is on. The children should know themselves. And we make a big thing about it when they're doing well with their reading, we move them onto a harder book band. Most children in reception start on pink, and then when they're building those skills, they'll move on to red and beyond. End of year expectation for reception is usually blue. Most children get to yellow or blue book band by the end of the year. Some children may be doing a little bit better. Here's some pictures of children reading in the morning when they come in. We teach them to be independent when they come in, so they change their own books. Um, occasionally, some children will choose their favourite book every day. Um, if that happens, please let your teacher know. So we, we don't change their book for them, so we, we may not have noticed that they've had the same book for more than one day. And as children get better, they'll be able to read their books independently on their own. At the moment, short, uh, adults are going around helping the children, and the children are starting to learn some of those basic skills. Now, at home, how you can help. Say, talk to the class teacher, that's really important, especially if, you, if children are finding books too hard or too easy, but also if they keep bringing the same book home. Reading every day at home is really important, Get, give the children a chance to practice, and also see that reading is important and you're taking an interest in it, which is a valuable thing. Another good thing is when you're reading, either sit next to your child with the book flat uh, in front of you, or if you're sat at a table, just have it flat on the table so then you can see exactly what they're doing, you can check that they're pointing to the right word, and you can help them, direct them reading the words. When you are reading at home, one thing to help children with is pointing to the words when they read, especially when they're on pink and red books. So each word they say, they should be pointing to the word in the book. The big dog jumped up and down. Other things you can do at home, is we have flashcards at home with sounds, um, some of those tricky words. Uh, we do that in school as well. We, we show the children and they're just extra practice to help them remember. You can use those sorts of things to play games, such as matching pairs, and that way they're having to read and use their um, skills. This is good for sight vocabulary, especially those words that you can't always sound out, because um, so it helps children just recognise those words. Another activity you can do is make a sentence, cut it up, or as I've used post-it notes here, and the children have to read the words and then put the words together into a sentence. Now what to do when your child is stuck? There's lots of different things. We teach the children in school, and you could help your child if they are reading at home, point them in, in the right direction. One of the first things we do to help children in school, and you can do this at home as well, is get the children to make sure they're looking at the picture. These early books all have pictures with the text. So in this example, this bird is, you can see it's yellow, that word's going to be 
yellow. The next step of this is still struggling a little bit. Look at the first letter. It's a Y. Yellow starts with a Y. That helps children too. They can sound it out. So we might know my, and they can sound out the next word f, i, sh, and blend it together. F, ish, fish. As children get more advanced with their reading and the books get harder, the words get longer. One skill that children can do is look for words within words because by this stage, sounding out every sound individually, it gets quite difficult to blend them together. So looking for words within words. Another skill is to read on and come back. So this worm is brown and this something is black. Now, you may have got confused with the leaf or something else or not sure, but by the time they've read that something is black, They've looked at the picture, they've used their other skills, they can work out it's the snake. So sometimes going on, making sense of the sentence can help children fill in some of the gaps. Before you start reading the story, look at the front cover, talk about the title, talk about what's on the picture, because lots of these things on the front covers of the books will come up in the story. That way the children have already got that vocabulary and all those ideas in their head. So when they're reading, they're predicting, they've got some understanding of what might be coming next. Linked with that is, as you're reading, is ask lots of questions. That not only helps children's speech and communication and vocabulary, but it also builds that greater understanding of what they're reading, and giving reading a purpose. They're not just reading the words, they're thinking about the story and what they're reading about. What is going to happen next? So before you turn the page, can they predict what's going to happen? Are they really thinking about what, they're, what have they read so far? Who are the characters describing who's in the story? What's happened already? Well, at the end, you can ask them what's, what happened in the story. If there's words you may not think they've realised, ask them, do they know what that means? If they don't know, you can tell them. Now, if you don't already follow me on Twitter, please do. As we start phonics and all the other activities we will be doing for the rest of the year, I'll carry on tweeting pictures and videos of things we're doing in class. Uh, and don't forget to read the weekly newsletter because that will explain what we're doing in terms of reading and phonics every week in reception. Thank you.